Welcome back to Fox Briefs. Today we have a new movie called, Commando. Make sure to give this video like and subscribe for more videos like these. Let's get started. Colonel John Matrix is an ex-military squad leader who's made enemies all over the world, Russia, South America and even Syria. The movie starts with a series of murders, carried out in the most ridiculous, over-the-top way imaginable, machine guns in a quiet neighborhood. Driving a new car through the dealership window, and blowing up a fishing boat in the harbor, all the while, not attracting any attention from anyone else around. Flash forward to a middle-of-nowhere mountains cape where Matrix raises his daughter, Jenny. Matrix spends his days chopping wood, teaching Jenny karate, feeding deers and walking his log. Yes, walking his log. No, that's not a metaphor. He's literally walking a log. Suddenly, during a quiet, peaceful lunch at their middle-of-nowhere jungle hideaway, a helicopter shows up carrying General Franklin Kirby. Kirby tells Matrix that someone is murdering all of his former squad and that they will be coming for him next. Matrix, Matrix tells, tells him, him that he's out of all that. that. He's, now he's now just, just trying, trying to build a normal, normal life here in the remote, remote jungle with his daughter. daughter. And no wife. And his log. Kirby exits, but leaves behind a few military redshirts for the bad guys to gun down within the next few frames. Sure enough, bullets soon start blazing, and the bad guys mow down everyone they can. Matrix tells Jenny to go hide in her room while he runs to his heavily stocked munitions shed, which is secured behind a solid steel door and a two-digit passcode. It's filled with every kind of weapon imaginable. When Matrix gets back to the house, he finds the goons have captured Jenny and are hideailing it out in their rugged, off-road Mercedes sedan. Thug, if you want your kid back then you gotta cooperate, right? Matrix, wrong. Matrix runs to his truck to go after them but finds that some extremely random wires have been disconnected. So he does what any not-so-realistic dad would do. He pushes the truck over the side of the hill and begins to go after them. Since they are driving back and forth on a series of switchbacks and he is going straight down, odds are he is going to catch them quickly. Not only does he catch them, he goes right past them. Somehow, even though he is now below them, he passes them again. Finally, after magically passing them several times, he crashes into them and gets out kicking and swinging. Unfortunately, they have guns. Matrix didn't think to bring any of those automatic weapons with him on his joyride. They wrestle him to the ground when Bennett steps in. He's one of Matrix's former subordinates whom the bad guys supposedly killed in the beginning of the movie. He shoots Matrix with a tranquilizer dart that goes to work instantly. Yes, instantly. Flash forward to an unknown warehouse. Matrix wakes up, and former President Arius stands over him. They inform Matrix that they had to kill all of Matrix's men so General Kirby would lead them to him. Arius demands Matrix go to the fictional South American country of Valverde and kill the current president, whom Matrix helped in the past to overthrow Arius. If he doesn't, they will kill Jenny. Next, a slime ball named Sully and a goon named Henriquez take Matrix to the airport. Henry's ways, hold it. Matrix, I'll be back, Bennett. Sully is there to ensure Matrix gets on his 11-hour flight to Valverde, while Henriquez will go with him to make sure Matrix does as El President says. Sully, here. Have some beers in Valverde, Matrix. It'll give everyone a little more time with your daughter. Matrix, you're a funny guy, Sully. I like you. That's why I am going to kill you last. Stewardess, any carry-on luggage. Matrix, just him. Sully calls Arius to let him know everything is on schedule. Meanwhile on the plane, Matrix silently breaks Henriquez's neck, and no one notices. He then puts a blanket and straw hat on Henriquez to make it seem like he is sleeping. After this, comes what may be one of the most ridiculous escape sequences in the history of motion pictures. While the plane taxis down the runway, Matrix makes his way to the bathroom, which apparently has an elevator down to the cargo hold. He breaks through into the wheel well just as the plane gains speed. Rather than drop and roll on the runway, Matrix waits until the plane is airborne. He then decides to jump a thousand feet, staying perfectly still, and lands in a three-feet pool of water. He instantly gets up and is only wet from the waist down. An important note to remember here. It's an 11-hour flight. If you're not wearing a watch, don't worry, Matrix is. He will keep time for us. Back at the terminal, Sully eavesdrops on a super sexy flight attendant named Cindy, who is on a call with someone standing her up on a date. Upon hearing the news, Sully takes his 52, 100-pound bundle of boy toy and hits on her in the typical 80 seconds obnoxious way. Sully, love and careers. It's tough, isn't it? Sully, sounds like you need a date. Cindy, well, I don't. Cindy blows him off, but a relentless Sully follows her to her car and takes one more shot at her with some more patented 80 seconds pickup lines. Rejected, Sully walks away, but not before calling her a whore. Suddenly, the top of Cindy's convertible is open without her ever doing anything. Matrix's massive biceps reach up and grab her. 
After ripping the passenger seat out for no reason, he orders her to follow Sully. They follow the putts to a mall where Matrix finally tells Cindy what is going on. He asks her to go flirt with the guy and coerce him to come over to where Matrix will be waiting. Meanwhile, Sully sits in a mall restaurant with some random South American goon who is an expert at transmissions. Sully hands the goon a briefcase full of money, and the goon hands him three passports. Meanwhile, Cindy, who doesn't believe Matrix, tells a security guard that someone has kidnapped her and asks the guard for help. The guard takes one look at Matrix and gets another security guard named Biggs to help him. Biggs pauses from flirting with a couple of girls long enough to call in and for backup after taking one look at Matrix. Biggs, suspect, 6 feet 2, brown hair. He's one gigantic motherfucker. Suddenly, Matrix finds the security guards all around him and ends up in a brawl. Sully sees Matrix, freaks out, and runs to a phone booth. After fighting off the first wave of guards, Matrix runs after him. Even though Sully has a gun, and Matrix is standing right in front of him, Sully's stormtrooper aim makes him miss a point-blank shot. Matrix picks up the phone booth and throws it upside down. As more and more security guards come running, Sully makes his escape. The South American goon runs guns blazing out of the restaurant, even though no one knows who he is. Meanwhile, all the guards want to beat the crap out of Matrix for some reason. The only guy who does and have a gun. But they are no match for him, as he tosses them around like handkerchiefs. Sully jumps in his car and escapes, but Matrix jumps in her car and gives chase. Halfway around the corner, Cindy comes running out of the mall and catches Matrix. She jumps in, and they chase Sully from the city and up into the foothills, tires screeching all the way, even though they only going about 12 miles an hour on straightaways. Matrix rams Sully, knocking him off the road. His Porsche flips on its side. Then Matrix and Cindy slam head on into a telephone pole with no seatbelts which results in nothing more than another cheesy one-liner. Matrix crosses over to Sully, grabs him by the leg, and dangles him over a cliff. He then grabs a pair of motel keys from the thug and somehow deduces that this is where he was going to meet yet another goon. Matrix, remember I promised to kill you last. Sully, that's right. You did. Matrix, I lied. Meanwhile Cindy, who is only a few feet away, somehow still has to ask, Cindy, what you do with Sully. Matrix, I let him go. They drive off with Sully's wrecked piss yellow Porsche. The next few scenes are so ridiculous, let's summarize. Matrix gets Cindy to pretend to be a hooker in order to lure Cook in the hotel room. Cook, you scared, motherfucker. Cook, you should be, cause this green barret is gonna kick your big ass. Matrix, I eat green barrets for breakfast. Matrix, and right now I am very hungry. He's hungry. He eats a green beret for breakfast to win the fight. They find the next clue in Cook's car which leads them to a warehouse with dozens of South Americans loading up tons of military equipment, machine guns, rocket launchers, etc. All from the war zone known as Long Beach, California. Matrix climbs the warehouse through a series of fences, up drain pipes onto the second floor, through rafters and catwalks, and into a vacant room. Once, Once there, there, he opens, he opens a, window a window in the room, and, and somehow Cindy, Cindy magically, magically awaits, awaits on the other on side. Other side. Matrix sees a romantic picture of someone's airplane and somehow deduces they are using the plane to fly out to an island off of Santa Barbara. Maybe that's where they have Jenny. He got all that from a random picture of a seaplane. Cindy and Matrix make their way to the seaplane. But not before Matrix steals a tractor with front loader and crash into a military store. Cindy, wow. They stock up on all types of weaponry imaginable. But suddenly the police and the SWAT show up and take Matrix away, while Cindy watches from a few meters away. As the police drive away with Matrix in the back, Cindy catches up and takes out a rocket launcher which she somehow knows how to operate, hold and aim correctly. She blows the car up, freeing Matrix, who comes out unscathed. Along the way, they dodge armed vigilantes patrolling the complex in South American army jeeps while firing at them with machine guns. Once again, this is Long Beach. Long Beach, California. A stone's throw from Disneyland. What the hell are armed vigilantes doing patrolling the docks of Long Beach with machine gun? Matrix and Jenny make their escape in the plane, but their flight path takes them over a missile testing range. An intercept, An intercept officer, officer orders, orders them, them to land, land but, but Cindy, Cindy flies close, close to, to the ground, ground to evade, evade their, their radar. radar. Intercept officer, we lost them sir. Finally the two make it to the island off Santa Barbara and land the seaplane in the waters outside it. Matrix gets out and decides that the only way he can make it to the island is to change into a speedo and row there in a life raft. Meanwhile, the plane Matrix was supposed to be on lands in Val Verde. Some unnamed South American extras spot the flight crew removing a dead body from the plane and realize that Matrix was not on the 11-hour flight. Reality check, this 11-hour flight took us from midday one day to the mall that night back to middle of the afternoon the next day. Now, the absurdity really kicks in. 
Matrix hits the shores of the island with a full arsenal of weapons and a whole lot of Santa Barbara, South Americans to kill. However, this island has forts, machine gun towers, tanks, and enough arsenal to invade a small country like Valverde. The vigilantes begin to fire on Matrix with machine guns, tanks, and grenades, you name it, they have it on this island. Once again, the island is off Santa Barbara, part of California, here in the United States. Matrix begins mowing them down one after another, and when that doesn't work, he sets up a series of huge explosions. In the meantime, Jenny uses a doorknob to ply her way through the balsa wood covering a window in the room the villains were holding her captive. She runs across the compound and down into a steam room filled basement where she tries to hide. Unfortunately, Bennett is on to her. After the human killing machine known as John Matrix mows through hundreds of mercenaries, without getting hit once, he eventually finds himself face to face with President Arias, where the two have one hell of a firefight. After Matrix blasts Arias Scarface style with several shotgun rounds to the chest, he somehow magically hears Jenny call out to him from that basement across the compound and another building through all the gunfire. His parental instinct kick in, and he makes a dash down the stairs to the basement in the house he's currently in. Somehow it magically connects to the other compound, and Matrix begins looking for Jenny. However, Bennett finds and grabs Jenny before Matrix can. As Matrix finds them, he comes face to face with Bennett, who shoots Matrix in the shoulder, wounding him. The two stare each other down, Bennett holding a gun and Matrix a knife. It's our big finale, and Matrix talks Bennett into a mono a mono challenge. Bennett accepts, throws his gun at Matrix, and whips out his knife. After battling back and forth for a bit, the muscle-bound Matrix and the soft-bellied Bennett lock arms. In one of the most hideous scenes in cinematic history, Matrix throws Bennett into a random electric generator that happens to stick out of a fence for no reason, electrocuting Bennett with what would have killed a dozen Ted Bundys. Rather than frying the absurdly screaming Bennett, he somehow gets that last dragon glow and launches himself at Matrix with fists blazing. Finally, out of nowhere, Matrix unleashes a series of godly punches. Bennett grabs his gun before threatening to shoot Matrix between the balls. That somehow gives Matrix enough time to rip a steam pipe off the wall and launch it at Bennett, impaling him into the steam vent as he dies, but not before the cheesy one-liner. Matrix let off some steam, Bennett. As Matrix and Jenny exit the compound, they arrive back on the beach where General Kirby lands with reinforcements and Cindy's seaplane. Matrix and Kirby stare at each other for about five seconds before Kirby tells Matrix that he wants Matrix to come back and start up his old unit again. Matrix turns Kirby down and says this was his last time. He and Jenny walk out to Cindy's seaplane, and the three fly off into the sunset as this masterpiece draws to a close. Thanks for watching.